Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, America. <clears throat> good morning, the world. Good morning, citizens of this global arena. May God have mercy upon us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time. He's faithful all the time. Even when he's faithless. I mean, even when we're faithless. <laughs> he waits for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to share a couple things this morning. You know, um, I was watching this video, <clears throat> and it was showing all of these, uh, I guess you might say, uh, all of these youth gathering together. And they came, and there's so many other concerts, they call them, what kind, I forgot what kind of concerts, are. they're very famous in Europe and stuff like that, and, and they were all coming together, and, and, and in this arena, they were, it was, they can dress any way they want, they can do whatever they want, even in the concerts. So, and they provided water, the concerts were free, they could drink, party, do whatever they wanted in these concerts, they can fornicate, they could do everything. And they came, and, and as I began to see this further in depth, I began to see, I mean, they were loaded with tattoos, piercings, I don't know, where, where all, I mean, all over the place. Dressed strange, of course, what's strange these days. And as I began to look at them, I began to realize, and as the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me, he said, they have no identity. So they tattoo themselves, pierce themselves, and dress weird, what we might call weird, because there's no identity. They're trying to find their identity. And he said, that in that culture that is happening, it's nothing new under the sun, basically. Everything is being, you know, transferred from generation to generation. And as I began to look to the, I don't want to say integrity, but the characteristics of what was going on, I began to see two strong spirits. And, and I realized that it was Jezebel and Ahab's spirits of children, like offsprings from them. Now, I want to, want to, you know, understand that, you know, they call Jezebel and Ahab spirits in that arena. But if you really go behind what a Jezebel and Ahab spirit is, it's a controlling spirit. One's one that's distant from, turns away from the, from the Lord. Another one is one that practices witchcraft. And that's what they were doing. They had turned away from the Lord and they were practicing witchcraft. And that's what was going on in this whole concert. And I began to reflect in my own life in the area of... <clears throat> You know, knowing religion, believing that there was a God, but never knowing him. So you can believe that there's a God and still go to hell. You know, because I believe that there was a God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And I, in, in my own culture, I began to walk according to the ways of the world, secularism and so forth. And, and I remember specifically a certain day. When something entered me, and I didn't realize it until probably years after I'd been saved. And it was, uh, I don't remember the year exactly, but I was probably, I don't know, 11, 12, 13. And it was when I began to get more interested in music. And there was a, 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 a show, a live show or whatever, a show called Ed Sullivan. Some of you might have remembered Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> you can look that up in Google, I guess. <laughs> and the Beatles were on. And the first song I heard them ever sing, of course, my brother was older than me, so he used to bring in some albums. And, uh, you know, like the little rascals and things. <laughs> I don't, you know, the young rascals, whatever they were. You know, 
Johnny Be Good and all these other, you know, certain things and whatever. But as I began to watch them and listen to the music, I began something to overtake me. I mean, I was a little heathen anyways. But this made me worse. It was like a freedom entered me. And it was a freedom of disorder. It was a freedom of rebellion. It was a freedom that came into me where I didn't care. I, I, it's not that I didn't love my parents. But I didn't care. I, I didn't care about being obedient anymore. I mean, and, and as the more I fed on this music, the more I changed. Never realizing this at all. And then there was Woodstock. It, you can Google that too. And then you got the Rolling Stones and you had all of these bands that were coming up that were satanic worshipers, but nobody realized it because it was hidden. All of these things were hidden in plain sight. And we didn't know that these individuals had sold their souls out to Satan. And they were feeding off of us. And they were making money off of us. And we were being used in a tremendous way. And culture began to change. There was reshaping of humanity in every area of, le of level globally. But it was basically in the areas where communication was able to spread further. I mean, you didn't hear about it too much in the jungles because there wasn't too much in there, you know. Of course, they were already practicing witchcraft anyways. And of course, many things were handed down from culture. Even Jesus was rebuking them, saying, you're more concerned about the traditions of men than you are the, the ways of God. And I began to see this occur more and more and more. And it wasn't until I hit enough walls and I called on Jesus because I didn't know any other way out that there was true freedom. See, so many times you don't know that you're free until you're free. Amen. See, you mean you, we lived in a world where we actually believe we're free because we're actually rebellious. Well, I'm free. I don't have to take any more orders. You ain't got to tell me nothing to do with this, that, whatever. It's just rebellion. So we think that we're free. But we're really not free. We've been taken captive under another realm that's invisible. Even though we may think that we're free in a physical realm because of laws and rules and regulations or trying to get away with certain things, we may think that we're free. Whether it's lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it may be, we may think it's, we're free because we haven't been caught. But in reality, it's really not freedom. It's bondage. And I began to realize more and more in how God is trying to reshape humanity. He's trying to reshape humanity. There's a reshaping going on in this country, and there's a reshaping going on in the world. And even though we've come from different cultures, there is a spiritual culture that is being manifested. It's called the Elijah culture that is being manifested right now. And it's something that I want to talk about because even though that the Elijah culture is being manifested, it's going to end up as the Jesus culture. Amen? And Luke 1. Luke 1. But see, the battle is still the same. We're still battling fallen angels, a Nephilim race. We're still battling demons. We're still battling seductive, seducing spirits, Jezebels, Ahabs, all of these things. We're still battling these spirits no matter what. And Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. 
Is everybody there? Let's speak it. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they both were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, and they were blameless. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they both, well, they were what? Well advanced in age. So they were up there in their years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude um, of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your, your prayer is what? Heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, I want you to know that John the Baptist did not call fire down from heaven. He didn't lay hands on anyone to get sick. Uh, that was sick and, and healed them. He went out and decreed and prepared the coming of the Lord. This was the culture God was raising up with the John, the Baptist, known as the spirit of Elijah. This was an anointing of Elijah. It was the Elijah culture where there was, he, he said, look at those who want to be a part of us. There's no drugs and alcohol. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. No touching unclean things. And I'm going to use you to turn many to the Lord. I'm going to use you to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. In other words, restore families. And I'm going to, I'm going to use you also to turn those who have been disobedient against my wills and my ways to another wisdom besides man's wisdom. I'm going to turn them to a wisdom from above. And they will know righteousness. And there's something else that they will do. I'm going to use these individuals to make ready for my coming. Does everybody get it? To make ready for the coming of the Lord. Now we know that John the Baptist, which was in the spirit of Elijah at that time, was preparing because Jesus, they were around six months apart, I believe, and uh, so Jesus was going to come and replace John the Baptist. Amen? So the Elijah culture would eventually be replaced by the Jesus culture. All right. But then we know that Elijah is going, uh, returned on the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses. And then we know it says that even the prophet Elijah, amen, will come with Moses in the end time in the book of Revelation. Turn to Matthew 3. How many know Jesus is going to return? Amen. Amen. So do you think he's preparing his church in the spirit of Elijah? Amen. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, let's speak it. 
In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So again, he was here in the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the people away from the ways of the world and from the culture of secularism to a new culture from heaven. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Anybody ever feel like you're in the wilderness? Hello? Prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. So we are the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Why? Because if you're not according to the secular world, then you are according to the wilderness. <laughs> Because you are in a place that rejects you. They prefer you, you just go away. Yep. But are, they, can, they may move us. They may imprison you. But they can't stop this voice. Amen. Verse 4. Now John himself was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt. I think because he worked out a lot. Around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey because he was on a special diet. It was nuts and honey, like I shared before. He was the originator of that cereal, nuts and honey. In verse 5. And then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him. And they were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins because he was turning them around. Now, you got to remember something. Man can't turn a heart. Only God can. Man cannot turn a heart. It's impossible. Only God can turn a heart. But if you are a carrier of God, then he can use you to turn a heart. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 7, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said that a brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, here's something very powerful because this was very prophetic. Jesus did not come to bring the wrath of God, did he? So why is he saying, who warned you of the wrath to come? Because he was talking prophetically. Because there will be a wrath to come. Amen? But Jesus came to bring a sword. He came to bring the kingdom of salvation. He came to bring life and life abundantly. But he did not come to bring wrath. He came to save. Amen? So we see here that John is speaking prophetically. He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. That was a representation of Abraham's culture. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is what? Cut down. Cut down and thrown where? Into the fire. That's the end result, isn't it? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. Fire. Baptize you with the Holy Spirit. For what? For power. To what? Overcome. Everybody get it? Vipers. He's talking about demons. He called them demons. Why? Because they were carriers of demons. They were seductive, seducing. They were Jezebel, Ahabs, and all of these other demonic forces of demons in them. They were addicts. They were adulterers. They were liars. Even though they prayed, played religion, God saw right through them. He said, look, and I'm giving you an opportunity to turn. Amen? Oh, Jesus' wrath doesn't come towards the end. 
Jesus comes first for salvation. The second time he comes, he will not touch the earth. He will call us from the earth. And the third time he comes, we will be with him. And his wrath will be with him to, end the, to basically end the wrath that he sets forth for three and a half years. Amen? So we will come at the end of the wrath to complete the wrath. And then the kingdom will be set up. In Romans chapter 1, Romans 1, in verse 18. From Elijah to Jesus' culture. So, I want you to understand that the Jesus' culture is the Elijah culture. Does everybody understand that they're one? In verse 18, is everybody there? <clears throat> he says this. Remember, he said, okay, who told you you, you could to flee from the wrath of God? Well, it says, talk some about that right here. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All unrighteousness. All ungodliness. All unrighteousness of men who suppress the what? The truth in unrighteousness. Is there anyone that suppresses the truth in these days? Snap, Yes. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world is invisible, attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and in their foolish hearts. Were what? Darkened. Professing to be wise, they became what? Fools. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator. Creature represents something fallen. The things of animal. Also, creature is representation of beast. Beasts are also representation of fallen angels. They are known as beasts. Verse 26. He said, for this reason, God gave them all to vile passions, for even their own women exchange a natural use for what is against nature. This is where we get lesbians and homosexuals and transgenders. Likewise, also men leaving the nature, natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves a, plenity, a penalty of their error, which is due, which is death. Even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge because why? The conviction. He gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit. Evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but all those that approve of such things, <laughs> and who are going to be the same way. Amen? And also approve of those who practice them. Here is a culture here that has been reformed. It's been transformed. A culture that started good. Look, Think about Israel and how it started. It started in a good condition 
Moses came down with the Ten Commandments and so forth. God rescued them. And, and, and every time they went to go serve other gods. That's what the enemy does. That's why he, so there's idols, there's idolatry, there's all kinds of things that begin to change a culture. You and I, we were, we were molded, we were changed by our culture, by what we were brought up in. Now, we had a culture that we inherited, then there's a culture that's environmental. And in these cultures, they reform you in many areas. That's why God said, come out from among them and be separate. Don't touch what is unclean. Why? Because you'll be reformed again back to the, your, the way you were. And we don't want to go back. We want to go forward. Amen? So in this, we see this is God's reason for wrath. Again, Jesus came the first time to, to bring repentance and turn them away from the ways of the world. The second time he will appear in the sky, which is known as a rapture. Amen. And I share that this is why in this, now I want you to grab hold of this, John will be beheaded. Amen. John will be beheaded. That is also significant because the headless body will be removed from the world. Amen. All right. So if you go back into history, Elijah, and that word meaning, his name means my God is Yahweh or Jehovah is God. That's the meaning of the word Elijah. That's why you and I are now stepped into an Elijah culture to where Jesus is our God. Jesus is the name of our God. Because they're all one. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. Now, active at this time, I want to talk about in the 9th century B.C., uh, during the reign of Ahab, the king of Israel, and his uh, Phoenician wife, born the queen of Jezebel, whose father was the king of Tyra. Now think about this. Her father was the king of Tyra. And they actually got married, uh, Ahab and Jezebel, for political purposes, as a political move. Sound familiar? <laughs> so she was from the lineage of the Canaanites, which was the Nephilim race. She brought all of her gods and goddesses to Israel under the prince of power of Baal. She influenced Ahab to leave her God of Israel and follow, to leave his God of Israel to follow her gods. And something began to change. Culture began to change. It was a time of sacrifice of children. They had a big statue, all bronze, iron, and in it, hands came out, and this was Baal. And they would heat up Baal and fire underneath, and they would put their children on them and sacrifice them. That's no different than abortion. There was sacrifice. They also had sexual orgies, perversion, and offering to Baal. Men with men, women with women. There was adultery, adulteresses. There was witchcraft, loads of witchcraft at that time. And again, that was no different than what was going on here too. We've, we've, we've gone right back to under, this country has been taken by Baal. Amen? Go to 1 Kings 18 for a second. Again, when I saw this concert and what was going on, I thought, oh my God. We're seeing this happen all over again. 
people are running away from God and people are bringing new gods, false gods, demonic forces, witchcraft, seduction, seducing. 1 Kings 18 and 25. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, there are loads of prophets of Baal in this country. Loads of them. There's a lot of prophets of Ahab. People think that they've been called to be a prophet. And they're really not fulfilling what they're being called to do. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourself and prepare it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So they took the bull which was given to them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning to evening till, till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. They leaped about the altar which they had made, and so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. For he is a God. Either he is meditating or he is busy or he is on a journey or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and they cut themselves. Anybody heard of cutters? Yeah. This is offering because the powers of darkness love to see human bloodshed. And the cutters, people cut. I heard of cutting parties. A bunch of cutters. They open themselves up to demons. They sit around and cut themselves with razor blades. You can see this cutting marks on their legs and uh, their arms or whatever. Just skinny cutting marks. That is offerings because of the influence of the powers of darkness under Baal's authority. Again, so they cried aloud and cut themselves and as was their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them. And when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice. No one answered and no one paid attention because God muzzled them. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near me. So all the people came near to him. And he prepared the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a, a trench around the altar large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bulls in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time, and they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time, so they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, and he, uh, and he also filled the drench, trench with the altar. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near to and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things according to your word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifices and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, Lord, he is God the Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and executed them right there. There was 400 that he killed that day. See, for me and you, we are calling fire down on the satanic ritual altars, on high place of Satan's locations, principalities, wickedness in heavenly places. We are calling fire down and you have the right as the anointing is upon you to destroy the works of Baal. And if more believers would rise up and get filled up 
they would start attacking instead of getting caught up in their own little worlds. Because see, there's something bigger than our own little world. Amen? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what happened afterwards? Because there was a famine there. After they had, after Elijah, they had killed all the prophets of Baal and ceased their mouths, it rained. Blessings came. Does everybody get it? Because they're the ones that hold up your blessings. Ezekiel 28. The devil comes over to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. All glory. Ezekiel 28. Verse 12. Now Jezebel's father was the king of Tyra. Let's look at this. Verse 12. The Lord says, Ezekiel, prophesy, son of man, take up a lamentation for who? King of Tyre, and say to him, thus says the Lord, you were a seal of perfection. Now, you know he's not talking about the king physically. He's talking about another self-proclaimed king called Lucifer. You were a seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. Why? Because he was in charge of the earth at the time. He was a praise and worship leader of the universe, and, his, and he was on the earth. And these were the precious stones there. It says, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared on the day you were created. Why? Because he was the praise and worship leader of the universe. You are the established, you are anointed cherub who covers the earth with praise. I establish you, you are on the holy mountain of God at that time, it's the earth. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was what? Found in you. In other words, Jezebel's father, associated with this, was in the lineage of, in the Canaanites, and, and, uh, and the Nephilim race. Again, the devil comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So she was sent in. Now I want you to grab hold of something. Demons have no gender. Does everybody get it? There's no gender with them. So you may be calling out a spirit of Jezebel, but it's really not a gender. It's a spirit. Amen? It could care less because... Men have Jezebels. Women have Ahabs. Hello? They're just spirits of control. They're spirits of rebellion. They're spirits of perversion. Spirits of witchcraft. Whatever it may be. Its end result is to come against the ways of God and destroy anything that God is trying to build. In Matthew 14. You know, that's why Jesus said something very powerful. He said, if you really want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Self, remember, is the old man. It's part of the old culture. It's part of the old ways. It's part of the you. The you old. <laughs> you old, man. It's no longer part of you new. It's you old. But remember, the enemy wants to bring you old back. So you can fall back under that culture where God is trying to reform us away from it and tear us away. Matthew 14, 6. Hallelujah. Therefore, Matthew 14, 6. Is that what I said? Glory to God. Okay. Verse 6. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias dance before them and please Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Here we have Jezebel Ahab right here. Amen? 
So she, um, therefore, had promised with an oath that he would give her whatever uh, she might have. Why? Because he was lusting over her. This was Herodias' daughter. This is his wife's daughter, who he shouldn't have married anyways because she was married to uh, an uncle of the same family and all kinds of other stuff. And John the Baptist was saying, man, this is wrong. You ain't supposed to be doing this. <laughs> Verse 8. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oath, because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought to him on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Again, Herodias was under the influence of the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab. Okay. Why? Because there was practice of witchcraft. There was promotion of sexual, uh, secularism. There was perversion. There was adultery. There was incest. All of these things were there. And it brought the head of John, who was proclaiming righteousness. But again, Jesus was now taking over. Amen? Go to 2 Kings 9. Is everybody okay? 2 Kings 9. So as part of the Elijah culture, these are things that you and I are fighting right now, constantly. 2 Kings 9, and verse 1 through 3. And Elijah the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourself ready, take this flask of oil in your hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now, when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Je uh, Jehoshaphat, the son of Na Na Naimnish, and go, something like that, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him into the inner room. Take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. So God was re getting ready to remove the king of Israel. <laughs> then open the door and flee and do not delay. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead and he did it. Does everybody get it? Now, go to verse 30. So what was Elijah doing? He was passing on the anointing to someone. He was anointing him king, overseer of a territory. In verse 30. Now when Jehu, who had just been anointed, had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window. Then as Jehu entered at the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zamari, murder of your master? And he looked up at the window and he said, Who is on my side? Who, he said. So two of the three eunuchs looked out at him. These eunuchs were sanctified to the Lord. Does everybody understand that? Then he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. And when he had gone in and ate and drank, <laughs> hallelujah, then he said, what an anointing. <laughs> Go now see to this accursed woman and bury her, for she's a king's daughter. So they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore they came back and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishabite, saying, On the plot of the ground at Jezreel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. 
and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuge on the surface of the field in the plot of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, here lies Jezebel. Very powerful. Again, Elijah passes on the anointing to Jehu. I want you to understand something right now. Jehu is Trump. Jehu is who? President Trump. Oh. And who is Jezebel and Ahab? Hillary and Bill Clinton. It changed culture. Changed everything. We are the prophetic warriors. We are coming against these things with fire, with warfare. We are to be driving out these two major spirits out of our government, out of our homes, out of our culture. Amen? We're to break this stuff off of our children. We're to drive it out because it's a promotion of abortion. That's why this that whole place has been taken over by Baal. But God has raised up an Elijah culture now. And in this culture, it is driving out these demonic forces. False prophets. False teachers and doctrines of demons. It's driving them out. Sexual perversion. He's exposing it all over. This is all service to the prince of power of Baal. That's what this is in this age. Here's something powerful. In October 2016, Bill Clinton <clears throat> is doing a meeting at a summit. I forgot what it was. He's at some place and he's speaking. And he's telling everybody and how his wife communicates with the dead. That's called witchcraft. She speaks to Eleanor Roosevelt to get counsel, amongst others. And he's telling everybody about this. Hello? Of course, Bill himself was impeached for adultery in, his, in the White House, in the Oval Office. <laughs> Obama, now I want you to see how, because these are individuals that have been running in the government, and have taken offices in the government. And what's happened now? You got Obama, right? And and his or her wife, I don't know what it is. Whatever. Anyways, you have this couple in office who puts the rainbow colors on the White House, promoting the approval of homosexual marriage, gay marriages. And you got in here, he is a promoter of abortion. I mean, look at how these spirits have entered and run this country for generations after generation after generation. But we're the final generation. Amen. This is what this is about. We are the Elijah culture. Sent by God, filled with the Spirit, with the power in the name of Jesus Christ to remove all of these demonic forces with prayer and intercession. Amen? Oh, praise God. We've got right now, look at what's going on. Remember, I mean, when I went to school, and even if it was a public school, there was still prayer. The Ten Commandments were there. We said that our Father, you know, there was religious instructions, even, I mean, you know, you, you would go to a, 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 a public building and the Ten Commandments were there. And most of the places it said, in God we trust. You were able to bring a Bible anywhere. You weren't mocked for having a Bible. You may have been criticized occasionally because there was persecution for following Jesus. They thought you were religious. Amen. But now we've got the Ten Commandments being moved out of all the structures. Prayers out of school. There's attack against the Bibles right now. I don't know if you know right now, but California wants to put into law to outlaw the Bible. Make it illegal to sell the Bible. They are trying to run it through Congress right now 
to make it illegal to sell the Bible in California. Talk about Jezebel's Ahab's and seductive seducing. And look at, aren't they all actors? Hello? Pretending something they're not? Taking on these spirits? Look at what's going on in this country. We've got human trafficking, children's sacrifices, homosexuality, same marriage, lesbian and trans. In fact, people are confused with what even their gender is. There was a rise of unrighteous morality. There are what we call modern forms of gods. Money. Success. Pleasure. Addiction. Materialism. We have seen a redefining of truth. Realities and values. We've seen a redefining of that. Truth is no longer considered truth. What was good is now called bad, and what's bad is now called good. All of these are under the influence of Baal. It's a life without God, from God. Not from God, but without God. In other words, and in this life, in other words, where there's life in God, now there's a promotion of death instead of life. It's been turned around. It's amazing how people kill people for five bucks. I mean, murder is escalated tremendously. And there are certain areas in the country, like Chicago, it's incredibly crazy there right now. Of course, you got servants of Baal running it. I'm telling you, the Democratic Party is nothing but servants of Baal. That's what they are. And they got to be removed. They got to be voted out. So we can get rid of Baal's servants. It's happening. And get things back to restored according to the ways God planned it. Not the way Satan's kingdom planned it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. It's a reality check. Hillary will come down. And so are her husband Ahab. Servants of Baal. We must come against the servants of Baal. Does everybody get it? You got to bring this in your prayers. Come against those servants of Baal. All their high places. Start driving them out of places. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Oh, glory. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Those are gods. Lovers of money. It's modern day God. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Servants of Baal. Having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people do what? Turn away. Why associated with them? For these are sort that creep into households, ministries, and businesses, and things of God. It may gullible, uh, gullible men and women loaded down with sins, let, led away by various lusts, always learning and never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they're not willing to be reformed. Now, Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. So again, we see this. These, this is, in other words, he just explained to me and you, servants of Baal. In Revelation 17,
Lucifer's offsprings, which we were once, not anymore. But Lucifer's offsprings now have become adults, politicians. They've become in high places of military and government. They've become judges and attorneys. Dictators. They become very wealthy business individuals. They're servants of Baal, though, in this day and age. We've got to pray in that arena and attack their financial support. Does everybody get it? We've got to break their financial support and remove those things. In Revelation 17 and verse 1, let's speak it. The one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In other words, this is witchcraft. This is evil influence. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints because she, per, she influenced, I don't like to say she, but this demon, this demonic force, influenced so much murder. And a lot of this murder is abortion. You know, in other countries, it's, abortion is great also. In China, in Japan, in other countries, you're only allowed to have so many children. If a woman gets pregnant, she must, must be aborted. Or it can only be a male. Or you can only have one male or one child or whatever. But they have rules. So they abort the children. So in other words, this influence of Baal's doctrines is causing bloodshed globally. Influencing religions to fight against one another. Terrorists that are blowing themselves up, waking up in hell. Oh, hallelujah. And again, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her. What's beast mean? Fallen angel. Which has seven heads and ten horns. And the beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. They will marvel because they will be easily deceived. From the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that it was and is not and yet is. Powerful. The mother of harlots is associated with the Jezebelic spirit. Again, it's just a spirit of Baal. That's all it is. The prince of power of Baal. Influencing, causing people to do witchcraft, sexual abuse, perversion, and falling away. Is everybody okay? Revelation chapter 2. This is reality. This is where we are right now. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 2 and verse 18. And to the angel of the church of Tyra, Thyra, Tyra, write these things, says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like bronze. I know your works. 
I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow the woman Jezebel to, who calls herself a what? Prophetess, because she was prophesying. She was a false prophet of Baal. <clears throat> to teach and to seduce my servants to commit what? Sexual immoralities. Does everybody see this? And to eat the things sacrificed to what? Idols. Indeed, I cast her into the sickbed. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Is great tribulation going to come? Yes. First there's tribulation, then what? Great tribulation. Unless they do what? Repent from their deeds. This is influence. Does everybody understand that? I will kill her children. Those were the, the what we call the prophets of Baal. And everyone that's produced, those now that are following the servants of Baal. Remember I share with you the offsprings of Satan that are now servants of Satan. And where are they at? In high places. He considers them their children. Her children. Remember, this is not gender. This is demonic. These are demons. And I'll kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who what? Searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. And I believe that these works are, if you're willing to fight, these are good works of intercession. These are good works of driving out demonic forces. These are good works where you are denying yourself and no longer living the culture of yourself. You're living a new culture granted by God. The Elijah culture. Now to you, I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. Let me tell you, we need to know the depths of Satan. This generation will know the depths of Satan. But hold fast what you have till I come. In other words, occupy. When the word says occupy, it means maintain your territory. Maintain your territory and drive out. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule with them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the, to the churches. That's why the Word says, those who are filled with my presence, those who have been baptized in the Spirit, I will give you power to do what? Cast out devils. Drive out. Lay hands on. See, laying hands on the sick is driving out demonic forces. But right now we have a battle going on in the government. And we must attack the government. We must drive out all the demonic forces. We must not allow the servants of Baal or the Democratic Party to enter any more political positions. We must pray against them and get them out. Does everybody get it? Yeah. Praise God. I'm going to close this 2 Thessalonians 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. Okay, we need to back up. Let's start at verse 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may what? Run swiftly and be glorified, just as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable 
and wicked men, for not all have faith. Not all have what? Faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guide, guide you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. But we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly. Why does he walk disorderly? Because he's still living from the past and not from the future. Does everybody get it? Everything from your past is disorderly. Everything B.C. is disorderly. We need to walk A.D. And not according to the what? Tradition. Tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how to ought, you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. Not because we did not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. <clears throat> For even when we were what? With you. With you, we commanded you this. If anyone will what? If anyone will what? Not work. Not work. Neither shall he what? Eat. Well, we labor unto the Lord, don't we? For we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner, not working at all, but are what? Busy bodies. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not go, grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person an idiot, and do not keep com company with him or her, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way, and the Lord be with you all in Jesus' name. Very powerful what's happening today. I believe the Holy Spirit wanted to stir us up so we can start combating in another arena. It is important because the infiltration of Satan's kingdom must stop. It must come to an end. And it's only the body of Christ that's going to do this. That's why we're here. But first, we must get cleaned up ourselves. Because you can't give what you don't have. Amen? In every area of your life. Get cleaned up, filled up, dressed up, and possessed with the Holy Spirit. But be a warrior, not a wimp. And cut yourself loose from yesterday's. Live from the future, not from the past. It doesn't matter. That's all that matters now is we labor unto the Lord, rescue as many souls, destroy the servants of Baal, and not allow them to get in any more offices and political arenas. It's time for the kingdom of God to take control. And prepare. That's what Jesus said. Pray the kingdom come and the will be done on what? Earth as it is in heaven. That's our fight. Let's fight and put up a good fight until we go home. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. Prepare our hearts for communion. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.